Okay, everybody ready? <clears throat> Let me mention one thing I left out on the discontinuing the emergency, the statewide emergency orders. We are the seventh state in the country to do that. The others are Alaska, Arkansas, Michigan, North, Carol North Dakota, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. Uh, and we, we're the seventh. And we've actually, our last restrictions as far as restricting people from doing things were a couple of months ago. Okay, questions? Governor? Yes, um, sir. The superintendent, Seymour, has recently said that she's against teaching critical race theory in schools. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with her, or um, do you believe that it should be taught? I, I, I think the critical race theory should not be taught to young people all, all the way up, up to college for sure. It's, it has no place in South Carolina. Uh, why do you say that? Because I, I think it's an erroneous doctrine. Uh, it is, uh, adds nothing to the type of training and education that people need to succeed in their businesses and to be a part of this prosperity that we're having in South Carolina. It's uh, uh, something that it, it simply is, is not, not necessary, not helpful, and not a, not a part of our experience in South Carolina. So My, Well, I'll let them do. I'll let them do do what they want. I still uh, know of no one who has presented a plan that would allow Santee Cooper to work its way out of four billion dollars of debt. It's going to have to repay on the nuclear reactors that were not built and were abandoned in Fairfield County. Plus, I think it's several more billion dollars in debt that they had prior to that or had accumulated during that time. I see no way that that organization can work its way out of that debt. So even if a sale provision is not outlined with a process in the bill, that does not mean that if a potential buyer arrives and makes a presentation that uh, something could not be done in reaction to that in order to consider it. I will see what the details are when it arrives. Yes, ma'am. Uh, DHS has not investigated your loss on the women's basketball floor. I, I can't hear you, please. Um, DHS did not investigate the Jamal Sutherland death for four and a half months. Uh, does DHS need better oversight when it comes to investigating mental health facilities? Uh, you, you're referring to the mental health component of that. Well, it is clear that our, our mental health component it, and our criminal justice uh, jurisdictions do overlap. It is very important that we recognize that. There are a lot of problems that could be avoided and nipped in the bud. Uh, that is one reason, for example, that I have called for a mental health counselor in every school uh, in, in South Carolina, and we have made some progress on that in places where they don't have a mental health counselor in the schools, for example. They have access to one now because of uh, uh, legislation that we had urged uh, in the past. But yes, it is an important part and it, it needs to be recognized and we need to make accommodations for it. Yes, sir. Last week, Chief Gillis led mentioned a 25% increase of murder rate that we saw from 2019 to 2020. In that same press conference, he noted uh, wanting to see some changes to sentencing reform and bond reform. Are there any changes to any of those two measures, sentencing or bond? that you would like to see done or that you've discussed with the chief? Uh, the chief and I have discussed law enforcement over the years, uh, uh, every, every year, uh, probably many times uh, during the year. I think we, we have, there's, I don't think there's any better law enforcement in the country than we have in, in South Carolina. I'm, I'm proud of our law enforcement and, and you, you have uh, seen great work by many of them in, in many different circumstances. But we need to support law enforcement. And there is a, there's an atmosphere out there these days. Uh, a lot of the, the media uh, make um, accusations, I think, unfounded, it, uh, inaccurately depict law enforcement. It makes it very hard for law enforcement officers uh, to do their job in, in that sort of an atmosphere and also uh, limits the 
uh, or may discourage some very capable people from entering uh, that arena at all. But I have promoted and asked the legislature to for better pay for law enforcement, for better training for law enforcement. We have one, we have a training academy. We're one of the few states that has a statewide training academy. It's very, very good. But we need to, and I would like to see that law enforcement as well as military career uh, retirees are exempt from income tax on their retirement pay. A lot of them take up uh, new jobs, uh, as you know. But we, we have, uh, we have, we must support law enforcement uh, at, at every opportunity and, and see to it that they have the tools uh, that they need to keep, uh, keep us safe. You must remember that when companies or when families want to come to South Carolina to vacation, companies want to grow, having a, a safe, uh, clean place to work, live, and raise a family is of utmost importance. Law enforcement is critical to South Carolina. But any changes to our current bond structure, bond system? I, I think that, yes, I think we need to examine it thoroughly. And remember, we have something, it's over 260, I think, magistrates that handle a lot of that. Uh, those, those, uh, the initial entry into the system is there. Some of it is in the federal system. Uh, but to, in the state system, most of that uh, starts off in the magistrates. Uh, I think we need to be sure that our magistrates have the training and the, the type of education needed to handle those things. And whatever we can do to streamline it and make it work better, uh, we need to do. Governor, have you spoken to uh, Director Pugh in regards to Friday at EJJ, the walkout? Have I, I have not spoken to him myself, but uh, uh, my staff members have been, as well as um, uh, Marsha Adams, the Department of um, uh, Administration, I know Chief Keel, uh, it, it, everyone is focusing on those events to see uh, what needs to be done. We, we know and we knew before the most recent events that it, it's, uh, again, it's very difficult to get people to take these jobs, particularly with the kind of climate that exists around the country and things you see on, on, uh, on television. But we have <clears throat> made uh, the Department of Administration is examining the HR procedures, the uh, compensation procedures. Uh, we have uh, determined that they are we asked for assistance in seeing that the new employees will get a bonus, referrals will get a bonus. We're doing all we can to see that we have an adequate supply of people who want to go into uh, that line of work. But right now, things are stable. We had conference calls uh, this morning. I think there are calls going on right now to be sure that the situation is stable and the people are safe. But it's clear that we've got work to do with the Department of Juvenile Justice. It is clear, likewise, every place around the country, they're having situations similar or, or similar to what, what we have here. Governor, what would you say to some of those business owners who feel that because of some of the assistance that people receive from the government that they can't find employees to come to work? I think they're right, and that's why I issued the executive order to disallow future federal benefits to go to those who, who are, are, uh, have, have been receiving those benefits. Uh, those federal benefits will end on uh, June the 27th, and we, we know. We've heard from all over the state, uh, of, of orally and writing and testimonies given by various people that uh, there are people out there who would come back to work, who are being asked to come back to work that are not inclined to do so, some making more than they were making by working, and others making about the same without working. And so we've entered into a, a situation where the, the, uh, the, the cure is, is, is almost worse than the, the, the situation was to begin with, so yes. We've eliminated those. We, we are, uh, uh, believe that that will, will uh, encourage those people to go back to work. But the Department of Employment and Workforce has a website. They've got, I think, 80,000 jobs on there. And they, they have it all fixed to where you can go in with, and put your talents, what you want to do, and they'll show the jobs around the state or in your area that are available. Also, we have training programs at the technical colleges. I mean, we put a lot of effort into this, but the, the people need to get back to work. We, we're entering the vacation season. We've got people coming from all over, and a lot of the restaurants and other venues, hotels and things are, are still short-staffed.
that, that's up. Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been asking for that assistance for a number of years now. I think it's I think it's better better our our, our legislators are, are are very careful. That's uh, one reason we we had a continuing resolution during the the pandemic. We did not do as some others did and went ahead and tried to forecast the money that was coming in. We stuck with what had happened the the year before. Stuck with that budget. That was the right thing to do. Our unemployment trust fund is, now has more money in it than it did when the virus began. But uh, I, I'm hoping that we will have what I've asked for is four and a half million dollars to go to DJJ. We've asked for that money. We, we need to get the best people we can with the best training we can into, into these positions to see to it that the, the young people who, who end up, that we try to keep them outside of the fence. We try to have programs to address needs without taking these young people inside the fence. But once they get inside the fence, we, we need to have uh, adequate supervision and training there. And I've asked for four and a half million dollars for DJJ, and I, I hope that the legislation will work to see the legislature provides that. And on vaccine incentives, I know you haven't supported the lottery system like some other states have done. Um, uh, and we currently have the uh, shot for shot program that DHEC's about to start. Are there any other incentives that you support or that you're seeing other states do to get especially that 20 to 30 year old group? The only, no, the only incentive that, that we, that I think is appropriate is to give the citizens full information, give them the facts, no hyperbole, give them the information and let them make up their own mind, provided we have a multitude of locations where they can get their vaccination. We have that and we're preventing, we're presenting that information, but. Uh, I think a lot of these um, incentives are uh, a little bit goofy. I don't think they make sense. Two more questions. Governor, you mentioned some tweaks to uh, emergency powers um, for governors through a bill. Um, anything that you're looking for from the General Assembly when it comes to a bill that would maybe change how uh, governor in South Carolina or how long they can be uh, keep up? Yeah, I think the, the law, uh, I think that what we have now is, is uh, there's some, uh, some, it could be made better. Uh, one of the proposals would provide for a 30-day period, and then the legislature could either amend it with a, uh, with a concurrent resolution or end it with a joint resolution after 30 days. Uh, I, th I support that. I think that's reasonable. Uh, and I, I'll say that the, the procedure that we've used uh, thus far in our winding up and then taking a very determined, deliberate, and targeted, narrowly targeted approach, and then coming back out of that as quickly as, as possible has been, been the right approach. And uh, I think that we've done very well in South Carolina. And the reason was because we had input, insight, and participation by the private sector, by the hospital association, the medical association, all the, the different federal, uh, excuse me, the state offices and uh, enormous interaction and uh, advice and information from every possible source. I think, I think we handled it very, very well. All things considered, I think that our state handled it as well or better than any, anyone else. Governor, coming back to critical race theory, are you seeing that being taught in grade schools right now? And also, why not, are we now- Not in South Carolina. Okay. Um, so now, why are we now just trying to push for this ban right now compared to last year or the year before? Because it's, it's now gaining uh, some, uh, some steam. It's gaining, gaining some interest. And there are uh, institutions of people around the country who are promoting it. Uh, way in the past, uh, that has, has not been a, a, a factor, but it is now. And again, I, I don't think that the critical race theory is, is and there, there are different uh, understandings of what that means, but it seems to me that that is, is, is certainly not necessary for the education of uh, young people four years old all the way through high school. When you get to college, if you want to take a course on most anything you want, then that 
that's up to you, but I, I don't think it has a place in South Carolina. I, I just, I don't think it's helpful and could be harmful. 